fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high yo silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> The pioneers who first settled the western United States were courageous men who fought hostile Indians and outlaws in order to make a new home for themselves. But when the railroad brought civilization to the frontier, they fought progress just as fiercely. It was the masked rider of the plains who made them realize they were wrong. It was he who pointed out that only through progress could the winning of the West be accomplished. But the old-timers were hard to convince. And it was in the fight for civilization that one of the mystery writer's most exciting adventures took place. Return with us now, those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Eagle Grove! Oh, Silver! Away! <laughs> Clem and Slim, two old-timers, were reminiscing in front of Eagle Grove's bank. And among their listeners was the Lone Ranger, unmasked but wearing a disguise. By golly, Slim, the West is sure getting civilized. You know, five years ago, you and me sat right here in this same spot. Behind me was nothing but a corral. And now look what's there, a bank. I'm telling you, we're getting so as even New York and Chicago and Frisco ain't got nothing on us. Mm, ain't it the truth, old Clem? Well, I don't know how we're any better off. Why not? Well, take the bank now. Can't say as I got too much use for him. Why, you darn fool, Slim. Ain't no place safer for cash than the bank as I knows of. Especially when you got a fellow square as Stan Clavin running it. Clavin runs the bank, you say? <laughs> sure does. Getting rich from it, too. Why would you believe it, stranger? Last month, he up and got his woman a pie in it. Yeah. I don't hold with bankers spending cash loose like that. Don't look right. Oh, what's wrong with it? Yes, don't look right, that's all. Oh. What's more, I'll say again what I've already said. Any cash comes my way, it'll go right in my sock. Or I can put my hands on it when I'm a minder. Your sock? <laughs> Dandy Whitcomb's sock, you mean. Ain't much cash you get that don't slide over Whitcomb's bar sooner or later. <laughs> well, what he gets from me won't make him rich. <laughs> like me now. Banks are good things if they're managed properly. I suppose Clavin loans money around the district, doesn't he? Well, I should smile. Wasn't but last week that the widow Moffat was hard put to raise cash for her taxes. But Clavin, he gave her the loan of it. Mm, she has to pay him interest. He'll want a fella to do business for nothing, Slim. Well, she And the widow's still got her farm, ain't she? She'd never held on if it weren't for the bank. Uh, she'd have found some way. And sake, Slim. I never seen a fella like you. You don't act like you want to keep up with the times. <laughs> yes, I'll bet it pains you something awful that folks using gunpowder and bullets instead of bows and arrows like was done once. <laughs> <laughs> Have your fun, Clem. 
But the fact remains, I ain't to know more about a bank than I do this before it puts my cash in it. You don't know nothing about banking. That's what I said, ain't it? Well, then I'll tell it to you just like Clayton told it to me. You put your cash in the bank, savvy? Yeah. And any time you want it, you can get it back again. But while it's there, you get paid four cents extra every year for each dollar. Four cents. That's trifling. Grant you, a dollar ain't much neither. But if you had a hundred dollars in the bank for a year, then you'd get four dollars extra. Four dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you just now said a dollar ain't much. Four dollars ain't but four times as much. You're a dog blasted idiot, do you got... Oh, you get me surreal. I can't talk straight. It takes time to educate everyone to banking. Well, well, Clem, seeing as you know so much about banking, tell me this. Yeah? If Stan Clavin is able to pay extra for having my cash for a year... Grant, you got cash. Oh, let me see what it started to. If he can pay me four cents a year extra, over and above what I pays him, or where does he get off at? Why, he goes and lends the cash you put in the bank to folks like the Widow Moffat. They pays him six cents on the dollar. He pays you four, and he's got two for his sale. Yeah, there you are. I know there was a skin game. Oh, you if, if he gets six cents, why don't he pay me six cents? Answer me that if you can. Why don't he, huh? Why don't he? What's the idea of holding out two cents? Ain't it worth the two cents to know your cash is guarded safe and sound? Oh, not to me, Dave, not to me. What I want to know is, why don't I lend the widow the cash she needs? And why don't she pay me six cents? Uh, I declare I give up. Ain't no use arguing with a fellow like you that ain't got no understanding. Take my word for it, Slim. The bank's all right. And from what I've heard, Clavin's all right. If you get any cash, deposit it. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe so. Before I do that, I reckon I'll wait and see if Angus Tavish puts any of his money in the bank. Who's he? Well, golly, stranger, don't you know him? No. He's a Scotchman. He's got that big ranch over to Sleepy Creek. Him and his five sons running. Yeah, and if everybody was as careful of their cash as he is... I reckon barkeeps and cafes have to clear out of this part of the country for going broke. Yes? <laughs> you ought to meet up with him, stranger. He's a fella to know. Honest as a day is long, and every one of his boys growed up to be men and good ones. But it's a fact they sure don't put the trust in banks or nothing of the sort. <laughs> when they get the dollar, they put it away in the stage put. I see. Well, when Tavish puts his cash in the bank, then by golly, I'll do the same. As long as he ain't sold this newfangled banking idea, then I ain't neither. You're a fool putting head, Slim, and don't you deny it. All right. Now, how much you got in the bank? Well, I got, uh... uh I'll have to cipher it out. Yeah, it ain't much, I'll bet. Well, let me see now. I, uh... I put five dollars there when it opened up six months ago. Uh, well, it'll be six months come next Friday. I'll get four cents for each of them five dollars oh, for geez. each year. Uh, well, that's a total of 20 cents, and, uh... And half of that, uh, half of that's ten cents. That's now, right. there it is. I'll have five dollars and ten cents coming to me next Friday. Ten cents free and clear. Ten cents just for doing nothing. Well, your money's been kept safe. Sure. No worry at all. Say, Mert, what's ailing you? You sit there like a bump on a log without opening your mouth. Just thinking, that's all. <laughs> Mighty deep thinking, I'll bet you. Clem, <laughs> you say that the bank lends cash? Yeah, that's where the bank makes its profit. Lenders are now. I get it. Seems to me, then, it's a heap better to borrow cash and to put it in there, ain't it? Oh, shucks, ain't no use trying to teach you fellas nothing. Hey, they come stand now. Sure enough. Hello, boys. How's everything? Howdy, howdy. 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 Right by, Mr. Clavin. Well, glad to hear it. You working these days, Slim? Sure I am, Mr. Clavin. Working all the time. Right now, I'm waiting for some hogs to fatten so as I can sell them. <laughs> I see. Mr. Cleveland, I want to talk to you. All right, Mert. You don't mind if I walk partway home with you, do you? Well, of course not. Come ahead. Good day, man. Goodbye, Mr. Cleveland. Oh, wait till you he has to pay me my ten cents. <laughs> uh, Mr. Cleveland, I hope you don't think I associate with them worthless no goods just because I was sitting outside the bank with them. <laughs> I wouldn't call them worthless, Mert. Perhaps a little lazy. You see, the fact is, I was waiting for you to come out so I could see you. Well, why didn't you come into the bank? I didn't want I wanted to see you personal. Well, what's on your mind, my boy? I guess uh, you lend cash, don't you? Well, that's the business of a bank, lending money on good security and collateral. Well, I want to borrow some. <laughs> you, Mert? Why, what do you need money for? That's my business. I want to borrow it, that's all. But you haven't anything for security, have you? What do you mean? Well, property, livestock... Something to stand behind the loan. What's the matter? Ain't my word good? Well, your word might be good enough for me, Mert, but a loan is a business matter, that's all. You see, we don't loan money unless we're sure the person we give it to can pay it back. Oh, don't trust me, huh? I'll tell you what you do, Mert. 
Call at the bank in the morning. We'll talk it over. My wife's waiting for me now, and I'd better be getting inside. Good day. Uh-huh, good day. Don't trust me, huh? All right. All right, we'll see about that. Later that evening, Stan Claven was listening to his wife as she played him a tune on their newly purchased piano and... You know, you play better than anyone else I know. <laughs> oh, you silly, Stan. But I do love my piano. I'm glad, Alice. How are things going these days, dear? First rate, first rate. It's hard, though, to make the men here understand just what a bank is and how it works. I suppose it is. But they'll understand in time. Mm, that Tavish family, that's my hardest problem to solve. If I could only make old Angus see that the bank can be of service to him and carry a lot of weight with the other men here. Won't he listen to you? <laughs> eh, not for long at a time. Oh, he'll get around to banking his money someday, but I may not live that long. The old fellow likes to have it in his house where he can watch it. Sometimes I wish that his money would be stolen from him. Alice. Oh, I, I know it's not a nice thing to say, but it might teach him a lesson he'd remember. <laughs> it won't be, though. Not with those big sons of his in the house. I didn't know that. Well, now, who's that? Were you expecting somebody? No, I wasn't. Sit still, dear. I'll see who it is. Evening, Mr. Cleven. Oh, it's you again, huh, Mert? Come in. I uh, wanted to see you. Well, come right in. Met my wife? No, nope, but I'll see you right here. All right. Well, sit down there. I reckon not. But you... I'll stand. What I've got to say won't take long. Very well. I've asked you to give me the loan of some cash. Well... Now I'm asking you again, and this is the last time. If you really want a loan, you're choosing a poor way to get it. I told you to come see me at the bank in the morning. I've been thinking it over since I seen you last. Even so. And I decided I might just as well see you tonight. Mr. Claven, I'm borrowing cash from your bank, or I'm coming right out and tell what I know about you. What's that? You heard me. This is ridiculous. I'll show you how funny it is. I said I'd tell what I know about you. Mr. Claven, I know why you come here to Eagle Grove. I know you come here from the coast. I know you had a bank there, and it went bust. Went bust, and all the folks that had the cash in it lost out. See here, Mert. Are you threatening me? Take it any way you like. Why, But you... just the same, I know a few things you wouldn't want told. If you don't give me the cash I asked for, other folks are going to know them, too. You... Careful, I come with a gun. Get out of this house. I'll talk. Get out of here. Get out before I throw you out. If you think your filthy tongue can cause me any trouble, go on and talk. Talk your head off if you want to. I ought to drill you. You haven't the nerve to shoot. Calling me yellow. I'll show you. Hey, you sneaking hey, blackmailer. Take hands off me. Not by a darn sight. No. I ought to beat you up. You'll be sorry. Out with you. I'll fix you. I'll fix you for this. But first, I'll fix you. Back. Oh, On your way. Don't take me. If I ever see you around here again, you'll get worse next time. You skunk, you bullshit. And this will help you remember I mean what I say. Oh, you bully, I'll get you. Now go uptown. Tell everything you think you know. But don't show up here. Oh, wait, Mr. Clavin. I don't oh. make no idle threats. What's wrong? What's happened? Oh, it's nothing. Oh, don't bother. Just kick the young upstart out of the house. Dear, what do you mean? Oh, never mind. But I thought... Please, that... just forget it. You can play something for me, if you will. Of course. Something to make me forget I lost my temper. I need some calming down. But who was here? Murta. I mentioned him at dinner. Oh. He knows of the bank failure we had in California. He threatened to tell everyone in town about it if I didn't give him a loan. He had no intention of ever paying it back, of course was blackmail. Plain blackmail. But the failure, that wasn't any fault of yours, dear. He can't hurt you. I won't let him. You're sure it was just Mert you argued with? Just him. But I thought I heard a horse and a shout. Uh, that's so. Some fellow on a white horse. I was so angry I paid no attention. You don't think... Think what, dear? That it was some friend of Mert's? Someone who will try to harm you? <laughs> of course not, Alice. And if it were, well, I think I'm still fit enough to deal with both of them. 
The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. Late at night on the same day Mert and Stan Clavin had had their stormy interview, a stealthy figure emerged from the rear of the bank, a bulky package under its arm. The figure made its way through the shadows to the edge of town in a grove of trees. There it paused, and before long the sound of digging could be heard. The two men, well hidden by the darkness, looked on. One was masked, the other had the grim, sharp features of an Indian. They spoke softly. Hello. He's burying us there. Oh. This proves one thing anyhow. Mm. What that? That wooden building isn't secure enough for the money Clayton keeps on hand. We'll have to find better protection. Oh. This fellow here, I don't think he's after the money half as much as he is the opportunity to make trouble. He'll do that when morning comes. Mm. He'll do it all. I'm glad we kept the fellow inside after his quarrel with Clayton. Him, him stop. He'll bury the money now. Where'd you leave the horses? Not far. Them here when you call. Good. You ride? The Sleepy Creek Tunnel. Mm. What there? Angus Tavish and his sons. Oh. They're going to play their part in this affair, too. You act now? One moment. I want them to be sure of success before we step in. Mm. Now. All right, Mert. We'll take over. Hey, Stand where you are. You're and don't slap leather. Man, right. You're a crook, a robber. Clear out. Now, wait a minute. I said clear out. Quick. No, wait. This will start you. Uh, I'll go. Don't shoot. And keep on going. Just don't shoot me. I'm going. I'm going, mister. <laughs> him go. He passed. And I don't think he'll report this to the law. It wouldn't pay him. Uh, get me that package, Kim. Oh, let me get it. Here's over. Here. Here, package. Thanks. I found her right, too. I'll go to Tavish's place alone. You stay here in town, Tonto, and keep an eye on things. Uh, here's Count. Yep. <coughs> if anything should happen that we don't expect, Kimasabi, right after uh, me. Count will do that. Come on. Get him up, Scout. I'll stay over. Away. It was almost two hours later that old Angus Tavish was awakened by an urgent pounding at his door. Uh, uh, who? Uh, no, who could not be? Robert! Aye, Father! Sam! Somebody's at the door! Douglas! Aye, Father! William! Aye! Stand ready in case it's trouble! Neil! Aye! Quick to light! But only one, mind you! Aye, will, Father! Stand, you can all save your breath and leave me to do the talking! Do then, mister, a, a matter. We're having a talk, Angus. Roddy, uh, stand behind me. Shoot if I give the word. And be careful your aim so you won't be wasting bullets. Right. Right. Angus, this is the opposite of a holdup. Eh? I'm not here to take money. I brought you money. What, what's that? Close the door. I'll tell you. That, uh, that bundle, what hear you there? Look. Uh, greenbacks. Greenbacks for the score. Count them. I'll do that. And tell your sons to lower their guns. There's no need for them to fear me. Oh, didn't you be hasty, man? Keep them covered, laddies. In Aberdeen, I was learning the man that takes your money, there may be doubts of. But the man who gives it to you, he's either daft or a crook for sure. Aye. Although disappointed in his attempt to steal the bank's funds, Mert had no intention of forgetting his resolution to make the banker trouble. In the morning, he circulated among the townspeople, and shortly afterwards, an angry group had formed in front of Whitcomb's Cafe across the street from Clavin's Bank. I told you that bank scheme was crooked. It's a skin game. That that cash was took by Clavin himself. Well, I ain't got nothing there. Nobody has now. There's Mert. He had the news first. Hey, Mert, come over here. 
Lefty, all you fellas have heard about the robbery, all right. You think Craven done it yourself, Murph? Don't know about that, but there's things I do know, though. Yeah, yeah. what's that? Yeah, Murph, you don't know nothing. Claven's all right. That bank's found. Back up, man. Let's Murph talk. <laughs> found, is it? Let me tell you something. This fella Claven once run a bank in California. And what if he did? I'll tell you what. Claven's bank went bust out in California. There was folks lost every time they had in it. Now the same thing's happening here. I tell you, no, fellas, do something. Keep still. You're just stirring up trouble, don't we? Yeah. 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 Come on, keep still. Oh, 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 How do we know how much was took from the bank last night? Maybe every dollar's gone, and that ain't Claven's cash. It's your cash. Belongs to you folks that put it there. Yeah, that's right. Maybe all right. of it wasn't tough. All right, say only half of it's gone. You know what that means? It means half you'll get paid and the other half won't. It'll be first come, first served. The ones that aim to get back anything at all better see that they get it right now. I got $50 there. Eh? Hey, Miss Harris got over 500 in the bank. I said let's go across the street and make the banker pay over what's left. Now, 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 don't tell us. Now, wait, now. ma'am. You'd better get that 10 cents profit you was bragging about while there's still a chance. Uh, but I'm a friend of Clay. Clay, you're a fool. No, I ain't neither. No. Come on, boys, to the bank. All right, come on, boys. We'll find out right now just what's what. Let's go. <laughs> Look at them. What can you do? They'll hold on to the money now, Alice. I've had to lock the door. Oh, no. I had to, Alice. But they'll tear it down. Listen to them yelling. Honey, you were adding the cash. What we have left on hand. Yes. Quick, give me the total. What does it amount to? Less than 2,000, Stan. And how much in deposits? Almost 100,000. 100,000. We've got to do something. Maybe some of the people who borrowed can pay back their loans if you ask them. There's about $70,000 out in loans and mortgages. It's all good. You told me it was. Well, it is, dear, but it can't be collected in a day. It would take months. Oh, Stan, I'm frightened. Please, dear. You'll have to do something. Talk to them. Explain things. They'll break in if you don't. I, I'll try. The 2000 we have. Perhaps if you pay it out now, it, it might take care of those who are there. No, it won't. Look, look, Alice, out the windows. Down the road. They're coming from all directions. Everyone's heard about the robbery. They'll all want to withdraw their money. Talk to them, Stan. I'm just praying they'll give me the chance. You stay in here, Alice. Stan, I, I'm praying. There he is, gentlemen. Boys, boys, let me speak. There ain't nothing you can tell us to see. Listen, boys. Listen to me. Listen, boys. You're going to get your money back. Every penny of it. It's all safe and sound. Let me tell you just what happened. You've got this all wrong. There was some money stolen from here last night, but not much. Now, you know that you're all getting interest on the money you have here. Where's Gordon? Give us that money. We want it now. Wait. You'll get it. Let me explain. To get the interest for you, I have to lend the money to people who want it. People who can put up something like a farm or cattle or something that's worth a lot more than the money they borrowed. If they don't pay back what they borrowed when they agree to, then they have to sell their property so the bank won't lose. And that means you won't lose either. Cut their car. Get back inside and start shutting out the money we're here for. Wait. We haven't enough cash on hand to give back all that was put in. Here's what we thought. We're skinned now. That's the trick to cheat us. You're not being cheated. Your money is all invested for you. I'll take the names of all of you who want to get your money. And I'll see that you're paid just as soon as we get it in. Clavin, when we put that cash in your bank... You said we could have it back any time we wanted. Either you was lying then or you're lying now. Hey, give us the cash. We want it now. Ben, Ben. Shut up. Out of our way. We'll have our right. Please, Ben. Listen. My husband won't cheat you. You're done right, he won't. And you're all a pack of local idiots. You're making trouble for nothing. You're making trouble because you ain't got the sense to know better. Ben, stay out. Right. Inside, fellas. No, no, stay back. One moment, ma'am. You're likely to get hurt. Rush him. Come on. Hey, 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 hey. Look. Come on. Who's that coming? Who is it? A man's grave. Get right first. Hey, 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 Watch out. What is that happening? Alice, look. There's Tavish. Angus Tavish, his son. Time's for Tavish to come here. Stan. Fall back. Back, all of you. Tavish. Hey, said open up this bank. But Tavish, you, you haven't any money here. Matter of fact, Will, I will, eh, in just a few seconds. I've decided that we robbers running loose around these parts. My cash ain't safe at him no more, so here I be. Hey, Tavish, this bank was robbed last night. Well, you done, fool. What of it? 
The cash that's in the bank is the smallest part of it. Robbers can't steal farms and cattle, and that's where most of it's invested. Come on, lads. Neil, don't play. Bob, all of you get in here. Laban, me and my boys and all my cow hands got cash to put in here. Yes, yes, of course, Mr. Tavish. If any of you men want to draw out your money, stand in line at the door. With what Angus deposits, Claven can pay you. You'll get paid in turn. I'll handle the first man to try to rush the door myself. That mask man, I'll bet he's the one that stole the money. He's a crook. Oh, call it, you know, I'm betting that there's a long ranger. <laughs> I got a dollar. I want to open up an account. Hold it said I would when Tabby's did. All right, Slim. And I got some cash I want at the cafe. I'm putting it in the bank, yeah. too. Yeah. Now stand in line and wait your turn. Far and near, people had come into town to withdraw their money, but returned home to get more to deposit. Stan Claven and his wife put in the hardest but the happiest day of their lives. When the day was finished, Tavish returned to the bank and... Uh, I want to talk with you, Claven. Mr. Tavish, no one could be more welcome. You've saved me today. It wasn't me. It's a long story, uh, Claven. Uh, uh, that money that me and me boys banked today, that was... Uh, Cash, it was stole from you. What? And here's the passbooks you gave us. It's your money. Tavish, you didn't steal it. No, the cash was brought to me by the masked man. And the masked man took it from the fellow that did the stealing in the first place. Who was that? Uh, he told me not to say. He said he'd uh, handle the bottom in his own way. Only, uh... Yes? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you don't see Mert around these parts no longer, don't be surprised. Mert? Mert stole the money? I never said so, did I? But the masked man, who's he? Clavin, he was the one man in all the West that could have persuaded me to do what I did. The masked man was the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Then, Tavish, I have you and him to thank for everything that happened today. And I'll not forget it. Just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. Thank you.